He's Shana, not ready. Right, he's right. I've been calling you Shana all the time. Right. And I didn't really know how to uh, spell your name uh -huh. until I went to uh, talk to the uh, secretary, church secretary. She told me it was C-H-A-I-A. It is. It is. Yes. <laughs> Shaya. Yes, Shaya. Where were you born? Um, here. I was born at home, actually. Mm -hmm. It's a funny story. What's so my dad delivered me. Uh, he's not a doctor. <laughs> but um, so I believe that I was born on a Sunday, um, if I'm not mistaken. But um, my dad had left my mom at home and had gone to, I think, another service, an afternoon mm -hmm. service. She stayed home. And um, he came home. And middle of the night, I think I got a little restless. And... Um, delivered me. No kidding. Yeah. So technically, May's Landing, but then probably my birth certificate says Summer's Point or something oh, yeah. like that. Yeah. yeah. I'm not going to ask you when because then most women don't want to just tell their age. I'll tell you. Not my age. I'll tell you October 15th. October 15th. <laughs> yeah. Here in Atlantic City is where it was? Yeah. Um, Summer's Point. Summer's so, Point. Mm -hmm. You know what? It's a funny story because I delivered Wayne. Oh, really? Uh, not Roy Wayne. I'm sorry, Renee. Wayne was born in the hospital. Okay. And my daughter. Okay. So we have some kind of born at, uh, at uh, Standing Home Village. Okay. Uh, I'll cool. Her, yeah. It's a funny thing as a police officer too. You know, I've delivered so many babies. Really? Yeah. Yeah. We get the call, the ladies in labor, and by the time we get there to get her to the hospital, before we get her to the hospital, right. the baby's coming. Yeah, that was my testimony. Yeah. What is your educational background? So, um, well, I graduated from Absegami High School in 2002. Um, if anyone watching is a mathematician, they can probably figure out how old I am by the end of this. Um, I graduated in 2002 from Absegami High School. Then I went to Temple University and I graduated in 2006 with a BS in English education. And then I got a master's degree um, from Wilmington University in 2011. Mm -hmm. Quite extensive. Uh, so I keep on talking now, I find out how old you are. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's fine. You are. Uh, How's background? You're a teacher now, aren't you? I'm a school counselor at Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. School Complex here mm -hmm. in Atlantic City. Um, my undergrad is in English education, so um, I went through that whole program, the education program, and um, then I became a teacher. Mm -hmm. I was hired um, by Diane Saunders, one of our members. Um, and I taught seventh and eighth grade English language arts at Chelsea Heights School. And then I became a middle school literacy coordinator mm -hmm. for Atlantic City Public Schools. I did that for five years and now I'm a school counselor at MLK. Have you always, always wanted to be a teacher? No. No, <laughs> not really? No, okay, so. Um, How did that come about? <laughs> well, <laughs> my guidance counselor in, uh, in high school basically was letting me know where scholarships were coming from. And um, I was like, okay, well, let me see about this. And so Phi Delta Kappa was offering a scholarship um, for those that were pursuing a degree in education. So mm -hmm. I was like, money talks. <laughs> so let me, oh, yeah. let me go this way. But um, I think that it was um, destiny for me, if you will. God definitely has a plan. and. Um, Although I'm not in the classroom as a teacher anymore, I just love being around kids and it's just a, an exciting experience when I, I get to kind of share some things that... Yeah, so what I've do you learned. do? You, 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 uh, what do you, uh, what are your fun, what is the fun, what is the function of your job, I mean? Okay. Uh, so as a school counselor, um, I'm basically, I like to tell kids... Take bad kids? Um, sometimes, oh, yes. Yeah. Yes, sometimes I'm used as an interventionist, oh. but um, 
I try to be more proactive, so um, just teaching them character education, um, how to resolve conflict um, in a healthy way, um, cyberbullying, you know, being uh, responsible online and things of that nature. Um, just a whole bunch of Do you hold classes for that? Uh, yeah, I do small groups um, for students that are um, in need of specific services, so on a particular topic. Um, and then I do classroom counseling as well, where I, I'll do a whole class lesson. And then, of course, I do individual, individual counseling as well. You come from a very rich family. It has always been that way. Yes, as far as I yes, as far as I know, um, in terms of my maternal grandmother, um, she lived in Alaska for a long time. So that's where my parents met. They met in Alaska when my dad um, you found was that, there. You found that out when when, yeah, when he was, was yeah when he was in the Air Force. So that's yeah. how he met my mom. Um, so my mother, uh, my grandmother was in the church and my mom was in the church and you know that's where my parents met at her church in Alaska. Um, my grandmother here, my paternal grandmother, she um, used to be a member of another church and then she um, became a member here and I think if I had come a few hours earlier I might have been born in the church, literally. <laughs> Yeah, so. When did you join Second Baptist Church? Right away, or, or um, officially? As a teenager, you know, I I know how teenagers are, but I guess you came from a religious family. So church was always number one with you, I guess. Yes, right? um, absolutely. I think because we were not just church goers, we mm -hmm. my family was so or is so um, kind of invested in ministry here at Second Baptist, it was just very important for my brother and I to kind of be a part of ministry as well. And, you know, we were always a part of the Rosebud Choir from the time we were five. And then um, just always being a part of the music ministry and now I'm part of our youth ministry here. So, yeah, I think my parents have always, even if they weren't explicitly stating that I needed to be a part of it, just their, their example, let me know that that's what we do. Mm -hmm. That was the way that it is, that it was, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, <clears throat> I came from a uh, very religious family as well. Uh, okay. I, I was as a born to the first time I was born. Just at the top, buddy. Just at the top. Very, uh, top. Oh, yeah. You yeah. push it, push it. Uh, your father. Push it. My mother was very great. I love to hear her. <laughs> I love to hear you sing. Your, your you. brother, he, uh, he, was, he was very instrumental in uh, playing instruments. Mm -hmm. uh, did you have to take any lessons from singing? <laughs> No, I wish I had. I think that I would be maybe better than I am. Um, and also, I probably would be, uh, I probably have a better voice in terms of being able to care for my voice. I don't think that people always understand that it's not just about projecting mm -hmm. or um, just hitting particular notes. It really is an art. It's an art too. Yeah, there, it really is an art form. And that's why I love to watch my dad um, even teach during rehearsals because sometimes we're going through songs, but he's very technical. Um, my dad took lessons. I'm sure you guys yeah. discussed that. Um, and he reads music, but he's a student of music. So he's when got he. Ear for it. He yes. Can hear. Yeah, he can. And, the and slightest sound is. Mm -hmm. I don't like yeah, and, he, and he's such a student of music. So, with that being said, when he's relaying that to us, I'm just kind of listening and, and, and soaking it all up. Um, but formally, no, I haven't taken any lessons. Um, 
guess I'm just a student of his. <laughs> I know you do the same thing when you're leading the choir. I mean, you I have a sound for, yeah. you know. Yeah. I'm, I hear it all the time. Shea, you are your father's child. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so I think that that's, I'm taking it as a compliment mm -hmm. simply because I think that he's the best to ever do it. So if mm -hmm. I can be even an imp as good as he is. He is. He is your father. Is, so. I think one of the greatest. I, <laughs> I think he is your best. And plus, with anything that you do, anything that you're attached to, you want it to um, be a, a good presentation. Good, yeah. um, but most importantly, the reason behind why we're doing it is to glorify God. And I think that we should do so in excellence. Have you ever been a worship leader? Um, because the way you stir the crowds up sometimes, <laughs> that the Holy Spirit hates you. <laughs> so funny. Have you ever been? A I have. Leader? I've been the worship leader here. Um, I mean, in the, capa in the capacity of my name's on the program and, and I'm the worship leader. Yes, I've done that several times. Um, but you know, leading worship, I don't think that that's something that's um, so specific to you having a, a place on the program. I think mm -hmm. that every time that you are singing praises to Him, you're in worship, you're, you're, you're doing that. Um, I was just talking to a pastor yesterday, and uh, he was teasing me about whether or not I, I'm professing to be an exhorter. <laughs> um, but, you know, that's a balance, too, yeah. because oh, yeah. a lot of times I'm doing that when I'm supposed to be making an announcement. So, you know, it's really about listening to the Holy Spirit because he operates in order. Oh, yes, and does. decency. So, with that being said, you know, I just want to be decency in order. Decency and in order, right? But I do enjoy doing that, and I do enjoy reverencing God. So. Well, when did you really decide to give life your 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 life to Christ? Um. So. Were you I don't a teenager have, during the I school was, years? I. Okay, so for me, I feel like I have to delineate between when I was baptized because I feel like that's the formal showing where I'm like professing that Jesus Christ has died for my sins and I'm welcoming him into my heart. But I feel like in terms of lifestyle, um, I feel like that was later in, in life um, because I was raised in church. There were certain things that I knew better than to do because I just really love my parents. There were things that I wouldn't do to disappoint them either. But I feel like a relationship with Christ is so personal that at some point in life it has to move away from um, not doing stuff because you've been told not to do it. Yeah. And you really just being like, I want to live for Christ. I want to make him pleased with what I do. Um, so, I feel like maybe as an adult or an early adult, I really just became more aware of strengthening my relationship with him. And it shows. Thank you. It really shows. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, is there anything else you want to add to this uh, interview? I'm just about finished. Oh, no. I think you're a great interviewer. <laughs> Have you done this in your former life? With criminals. Oh, oh my gosh! <laughs> Pop Pop is so funny. <laughs> I call him Pop Pop. <laughs> but um, that's funny. I yeah. hope that oh, yeah. um, <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> you were not um, given any flashbacks in this no, interview. No, no, no. <laughs> you go back to interviewing <laughs> criminals. But yeah. yeah, so you definitely put me at ease. So you're no, probably true. very good at at what you did. Well, thank you very much, Shannon. Shayna. Shayna. <laughs> I don't know why I call you Shayna. I don't know, but in Yiddish, Shayna means um, face, I believe. So Shayna put on this, like pretty face. So. Well, you're beautiful inside <laughs> and you're beautiful outside. So thank you call me Shayna Punum. Shayna. Thank you. Thank you, Deacon Nelson. That's it. That concludes it. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much, Shayna.